Hey guys, this is Obsidian Show. Got another video for today. And this is going to be taking a look at the new ally, Jon Stewart. He is going to be available on the cyborg vendor as per usual. Legendary cost, 500 source yeah. marks. It is more of a controller ally or, or combo power ally, but what the we have uh, hard light turret barrage is the common ability. Summons a turret that fires in a cone in front of it, dazes enemies. Uh, we have corpse combo. Using a combo ability increases might and reduces combo ability power costs for 10 seconds. Cooldown with 30 seconds. And a rank 10 will be 6% might and 10% uh, less combo ability power cost. And then we have Enduring Will. Using a group power shield, which is a control supercharge, ability replaces the shield with a stronger green lantern shield and increases your vitality, uh, which should be vitalization, just a weird phrasing, for 12 seconds based on the number of allies shielded. And then the, at rank 10, be 35% uh, shield increase, and then 16% uh, increase in vitalization, which is ironic because they used the correct phrasing there. Uh, but let's uh, take a closer look and do it here. We're gonna look at both passives as well as the updated combat values. Every idle minute is an advantage for the enemy. I will not hold back. Okay, to take a look at the actual ally damage breakdown, I did update this to CR430. Just made sense uh, with, I think the last time I did this was CR414, which was like 11 months ago. Uh, so it just made sense to have everything updated so a bit more current values. Uh, I did also want to point out the RNG aspect to uh, Batman and Laughs and Cyborg, because you look at this chart and they're like, oh, it's Batman and Laughs does so much more damage than you know Blue Beetle or Shazam, I'm going to use him. This is entirely dependent on if you get all three card throws to hit at the end which if the ads are being pulled if the ads are dead line of sight depending if the tank pulls them what the raids are in the hallway rooms uh it's entirely dependent on that rng factor if you only get one or two car procs that drastically lowers the damage same thing with cyborg and his projectiles you know if the ads are against the wall if projectiles miss they're pulled anything like that there's numerous factors that can come into play that's why Shazam Blue Beetle is much more consistent, and that's why I put him as the top ally, because uh, at least there's no, you know, no, not a large RNG factor. But Jon Stewart's right up there, uh, just over a million. You know, it's, you know, far cry from the next four, 600, 300,000 damage compared to the rest, but it's still, you know, a top five ally. And if we go down to single target, this is non-boss single target. Uh, Blue Beetle's up there again, that's why he's very consistent, you know, uh, right up there in terms of damage as well as if you're not hitting a boss uh, John Stewart just pretty much the same I mean all these are pretty much a wash like 10 15k between them is nothing between all these so that's they're pretty much all the same and then we get to the boss damage which is going to be crypto again once again it's pretty close to health legends bot uh, general zot has that other factor where with the explosion proc if there's going to be a boss and adds around it general zod can win out in that situation um, but obviously crypto and, and house legends bot are just a rare compared to having a legendary with Zod and then John Stewart kind of falls right in the kind of line with the bot with the allies that don't have any kind of bonus boss damage and same thing cyborg with the RNG component uh, if you have a boss that's like right up against a wall and the projectiles will kind of bounce off and hit multiple times it can be up in the list but once again that's, that's a really niche situation depending on the raid but uh, the bosses were tested on the injustice bounty at CR 368 and then everything else is at 430, 430 on the sparring targets and the boss there. So let's jump in and take a look at the passives. So taking a look at uh, Jon Stewart's first passive, which is going to be corpse combo. Using a combo ability increases might and reduces combo ability power cost for 10 seconds with a cooldown of 30 seconds and a max rank at 10 at 6% might and 10% combo ability power cost reduction. So when you think of combo powers, you're thinking light, you're thinking celestial, you're thinking rage and atomic. Those are the primary combo power sets in this game. You're also gonna mention a 
other power sets that have one or two calm abilities. Like water has even flow, earth has jackhammer, uh, munitions has two in terms of sh uh, pump shotgun and multi net pull. Uh, so you've got ones that have one or two calm abilities that mixed in, but they're not combo powers, they're just combo abilities. That's the main difference here that you'll see me bring up in, the, in this uh, commentary before we get into the spreadsheets and show you the actual damage breakdown. But I, I, we need to differentiate between combo powers and combo abilities. Uh, you know, if your power set only has one or two combo abilities, it's not a combo power. It just means that you happen to have a combo ability. You know, Atomic has multiple ones, Rage has multiple ones, Celestial has multiple ones, Light has multiple ones. So how this works is that any kind of combo power in this game that is classified as a combo. So like, you know, Whip Thrash will have uh, Construct combos, same thing with Lightweight, everything. So if I do just Whip Thrash and do the combo version, now you're going to see this green effects show up on your hands and that's how you know that the corpse combo is active the other issue is that like i said before with those other abilities everything that technically is a combo in this game will proc that as well so that means the foot movement mod so dashing combos for whirling dervish like the, the tumbling mastery for rolling you've got the uh, brand of hectate in terms of that combo uh that procs it as well so the really that's where it, the kind of the waters get muddied because technically you don't have to be a controller power you don't have to be a combo power anyone can use this uh, and that's that's the issue that i find because you'll get one in uh, when you see the spreadsheets and the testing the six percent might is not enough so there's one of two things that have to happen uh to make this even remotely viable to level uh either the duration has to be increased so if you want six percent might then the, the duration has to be like you know 20 seconds or 25 seconds or even the full 30 seconds and have a perpetual one so as long as you're using a calm ability every 30 seconds you have continually six percent more might that may be more realistic especially when you consider like ivy's buff uh for the the poison uh, pi the other way is that you have to drastically increase the might that it gives like say like 15 20 percent might for that six seconds because you'll see in the spreadsheets it just the duration is not enough and the buff is not enough so what i mean by um the foot mod so we're going to use dervish and then i'll tap cancel it with that dashing combo so we're in dervish tap cancel and i have it active so anything that is remotely considered a combo in this game will proc this ally and that's where the issue lies. That has to be removed. The, the only powers that should proc this passive are the combo powers, not combo abilities. So the power sets in question would be, you know, Celestial, Rage, Atomic, and Light. Because uh, that's that's where you can justify having a larger buff. And that also covers all of roles as well. So if you're, you know, if you're a tank, if you're a healer, if you're a controller, you, you can use Jon Stewart because there's a power that will proc his ally. So if they're going to, you know, put this on, you know, par with say like Ivy or other or power set allies or kind of follow that precedent, then they have to drastically reduce every single a power set being able to use this. But because really all you have to roll, if you roll once every 30 seconds with Tumbling Master, you would proc it. So, I mean, that's that's not realistic. I mean, that's not the intent of the allies to have everyone just roll or like a movement uh, cancel like Dervish, which was uh, uh, you can easily work into any kind of might melee or even, you know, Vortex Trap or Dervish if you're a prec DPS. Not that the might increase would matter and you run it anyway, but it's it's easy, easy to proc this from movement mode and it's available to every power set. You know, that's there's too many. They have to whittle that down to just the combo power sets then they can justify increasing the might or the duration to make this actually worth it. Because right now, you know, I'll jump to the spreadsheets in a moment, but you're gonna see it's just not worth it. Um, so let's get in and actually take a closer look at the numbers. Okay, so taking a closer look at the results here. Uh, this is my uh, artifact setup, just Transstrat EOG. I didn't want like pet damage all involved. This is my base might, 285,556. And my ally setup was uh, non-damage related or RNG buff. So it was just Oracle Bot and Cyborg, just to assist with power. And then when I changed it to Witch on Stewart, then my might jumped to the 6% up to 302. So this was light single target without John Stewart at a baseline uh, average DPS of 160K uh, with 28 mil or 28.8 mil. Uh, and then light single target with John Stewart. My overall damage actually decreased by about 700K. My average DPS went from 160 to 156. Now this is the closest comparison you'll ever find in, in like parser testing. My hit difference was two hits, 864 versus 866. My crits were exactly the same, 418 versus 418. Uh, so, I mean, you can't get much of a closer comparison than this on single target. Now, 
this is where the duration kind of plays into a factor because with light single target there's not a lot of dots here a lot of burst damage the dot damage comes from just the heat vision kind of jump cancel uh which is basically just to kind of proc a uh, strategist card so with the with the short duration for that six percent buff you're only getting like a few hand claps or, or maybe the the first few ticks of heat vision uh so it's it's not some or like yeah you know, like a grasping hand pull or anything like that so that's that's where the duration comes into play with light single target being an actual 2.65 percent decrease with john stewart um so i mean that's still kind of with the margin two percent is not like either a two percent increase two percent uh, decrease you know not a huge margin of error there but same thing at the with this was six parsers at 30 seconds so it was 180 seconds of dpsing that's you know a good enough sample size for this test it's just that light single target with it being like slower burst damage isn't really designed for this uh and that's that's where that duration comes into play if you had a six percent might increase for 30 seconds with light single target you'd see a much drastic uh increase and then we move to earth so this was just basically jackhammer spam uh in you know unstoppable clip with a, a tectonic break so this is more kind of looking at an ideal situation because you have constant damage in that six in that uh, might buff window and i had a 4.29 percent increase which is not that much i mean i moved from 52 pretty much 53 mil to 55. so yes that helped but at the same time i mean that's not much of an increase in damage um the the total hits were about 50 difference uh crits were pretty close to about you know 13 difference there so it's once again, not a huge difference in terms of the uh, parser test or, or the comparison, but like I said before, less than 5% increase for a legendary ally that you're going to have to run over something else where like say, um, you know, another ally conversation with like say Static or Shazam or Black Man or Laughs. And then we had Rage. Rage without Jon Stewart. I had an average damage of 264k uh, with a total of 47.6. And then Rage with Jon Stewart. I went up to 300, uh, sorry, average DPS was 278. So not much of a damage decrease again, only like 14K, you know, change in the average. Um, worked out to about two and a half mil extra damage. So it worked out to about 5.28% increase. So it's, once again, you're looking at like a 5% increase, which is not that much at all. Uh, and then even a decrease in some situations where you don't have a lot of like burst damage in that short window. So it just comes... It's just not practical the way it's set up. I mean, the 10% power reduction wasn't really noticeable. Maybe it's going to be more noticeable in content. Uh, certainly, it means you wouldn't have to probably run Cyborg anymore um, as, as as light. Not, you're not running into too much situations unless you're just trying to save money on allies because he's a, a rare, sort of epic. But it's just these these numbers and these results don't justify a legendary ally, especially when you compare like the difference from like Ivy. Uh, if you're trying to get more power set specific so like i said before one or two things have to change either the duration has to be increased drastically from 10 seconds to like say like 25 to 30 uh, or you're increasing the might buff so instead of six percent it's like you know 15 20 percent for that 10 seconds uh, and then you'd have a noticeable increase because you, you should be seeing you know a, a closer to a 10 percent increase in damage i mean that's more realistic especially given like a power set ally um you know, let's get in and take a look at the second passive. Okay, so taking a look at Jon Stewart's second passive, which is Enduring Will. So using Group Power Shield ability replaces the shield with a stronger Green Lantern shield and increases your vitality for 12 seconds based on the number of allies shielded. And then rank 10 plus 35% shield health just means it's 35% stronger. It doesn't actually adjust the base shield multiplier. And then the 16% uh, vitalization, so 2% per ally in a group of eight. So the actual uh, base shield multiplier, which I referred to in, in a previous video, as well as I'll put the calculations up here on the screen, is 112.5% restoration plus 150% dominance. So as you can see, control shields are already kind of, you know, at the bottom of the barrel anyway, in terms of strength. So it's not like this is going to be a massive advantage, but there may be these kind of instances in content where a stronger shield may be helpful. So to demonstrate it here, I don't have the ally equipped. We're just going to attack it and proc it. And let's see now if I can get away without dying. Nope. So you can see there, it took two hits to break it. Uh, 213,333 and 38,030. 
would be nice if a broken one hit, but that's the one drawback to testing this is you need actual content that will break it in one hit to be properly tested. That's why I've taken off some gear, but that did, still didn't help. So now we're gonna equip the ally. And repeat on Ghost. As you can see, the new animation for group shielding. And as also you can see that the animation effects is lasting past the actual uh, damage break. As you saw, easily my shield broke, but then uh, the damage still persisted. So that's one bug that has to be fixed because that could be an issue in content where you think you're shielded or the healer thinks you're shielded where you actually aren't. It's already broken and just hasn't disappeared yet. But in terms of the uh, calculation here, so we go from the totals here to 217 plus 122. So I'll put the calculations up on the screen here to show that it's going to be uh, approximately 35%. And that's uh, essentially it for Enduring Will.